The fervent desire to protect these waters and the fear of acid mine drainage are amplified when Kennecott and its parent company, Rio Tinto, enter the picture. Oh, Kennecott has a terrible history. They've, they've violated their permits and caused pollution at virtually every place they've gone. Kennecott has long been found at the top of the Environmental Protection Agency's list of companies releasing toxic materials. As of 2006, one of Kennecott's Utah facilities and the mine at Greens Creek near Juneau, Alaska, were in the top seven nationwide for toxic material release. And the mine that they cite is the closest parallel to the Eagle Mine, namely the mine at Greens Creek in Juneau, near Juneau, Alaska, is one of the largest polluters in Alaskan mining history. So who are you going to trust? In fact, published reports say Greens Creek has violated the Clean Water Act 391 times by releasing illegal levels of copper, zinc, cyanide, and acids. Certainly some of their uh, past history is not something you want to hold up as a shining example of, of good corporate stewardship. Ten years after its closure, Kennecott is still required by state officials to continue monitoring soils and streams at its Flambeau mine in Ladysmith, Wisconsin, due to persistent problems with pollutants. Residents in Magna, Utah, had fears even greater than water contamination. A pond containing two billion tons of mining waste threatened a residential community. In 2008, journalists from the Salt Lake Tribune discovered Kennecott's own legal review of the threat to public safety. In the report, Kennecott's attorney characterized the company's secretive approach to the problem as motivated by economics with no genuine concern for the public. They make the statements that they've cleaned up their act, that they know how to do this, they do it in an environmentally sensitive manner, and other Folks probably don't believe that and will point to some places where they weren't uh, quite as careful as they should have been. I don't think there's any question that the state is not looking at this in an objective and insightful manner. And Kennecott's own history is one of the, one of the perspectives that the, the state is overlooking.